Alright, well. <laughs> no, 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 I'm putting, I'm putting in money. Uh, I'm putting oh. stuff on Dustin. Oh no, time's running out. <laughs> oh, this guy. Wow. I didn't even okay, I put 10 on Dawson. I put 10 on Dawson. Wow, he's, he just wants my points. Oh he's yeah, of course I want the points. Why would I not want your points? So, Dawson, going for a good rest there, I think it's worth it to let it, let it fly let it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You got to. Other than this matchup, where it's so hard to get a punish. Yeah, she doesn't get a very strong one. And even if those really low percent and stuff too, if she gets like, like mid or something, you can uh, actually rest out of forward air sometimes too, if they try and down throw forward air you, which is probably why we saw Dr. Watch in there. It also does more damage, um, slightly percent wise, but you can actually just get straight up rested out of down throw fair. Oh well. my god, he actually, okay, that would have been a crazy nuttiest angle of all time if he made that back, but yeah, that's really tough. Let's go Yahoos, from 2 2 tonight. Rat. See? Hard turn. My man, he's out here. Getting four stops. I did points. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, man. Oh, that wow, wasn't cool. <laughs> what? Oh, that's that not. Definitely not. I can actually. I, I, Despite not being them as a person, I can guarantee you with almost full confidence that they did not mean to do that. Okay, well, it works out, so. The legend of Drefin. Anytime anyone transforms a Zelda, it's Drefin. I don't care. It's just Drefin. Dude, just if Drefin. every time I transformed a Zelda, Drefin took over, I would abuse the hell out of that. You'd be the best player in the world. I would, actually. Probably. Literally, in the world. And you I saw what Plub Zelda did to Armada. <laughs> it was oh, Drefin. Yeah. And Hbox. And Hbox, too. People forget about that. Yeah, it was Drefin, dude. It was all, it was all him. Yeah, Plub had to hand off the controller to Drefin. For his biggest wins. Oh, I love Drefin so much. Man. That's what Big Smash Media doesn't want you to know. <laughs> Drefin's truly the greatest of all time. Yeah, it's, it's not Manga Armada, it's, it's Drefin. He's actually even more ripped than Reeve as well, but. <laughs> yeah, all or photos Jay Flex, of him or Doctor. Doctor, yeah. He, he's a actually also studying in med school as well, so he has like ultimate jump. He's ripped yeah. studying. He's, a med he's actually Prince Abu's professor. At <laughs> he's Lod and Prince Abu's professor, both of them. <laughs> oh, I like that. I smash out a shield. That works really well as Sheik against Puff when they try and cross you up, especially at those higher percents. Uh, you can try and cast oh, the landings on the side. Because Puff will often try and cross you up. And. Which was my broadcast? Yeah, that, um, Maybe he's trying to, like, CC low profile that, uh, grab for a rest, but the grab actually didn't go far enough. It was actually, uh, a little bit of a misplay by Dr. Lobster, but unfortunate. <gasps> oh, the proof? That nearly killed, actually. Oh my god, an up air will do it, though. I love seeing Dawson go for those play stashes. I, I have to call them play stashes. Shoutouts to um, uh, Fish Prime, I believe. Coin that. Sorry, my okay. broadcast is coming back up. Oh, oh, the edge guard! That actually could have been big. He gets that edge guard. I feel like it's way more even, but. Lobster with another chance. Yeah, tack on some more percent right now. Every percent here is big too. This is where you turn like a two to three hit potential game against Puff into like a one hit game. Oh, he went for the gusto. I respect that. Let's see if we make that again. It should. We do. Okay. He's just using needles. Lobster knows to play this safe. He has one extra stock. And, okay, going to go to last stock. And now this is where it gets scary, man. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you get you, swings so fast. I mean, you just get, like, up Went tilted. Back to off stage or no profiled, jab this. reset, forward air. <laughs> Officer priming it. Yep. So, I'm we'll see where they end up in the game, too. Most likely going to see Dreamland. Uh, mm -hmm. Potentially FD, because they're usually puffs, too. Favorite stages against Sheik. 
Dr. Lobster, though, looking pretty good in that first game. Definitely not their uh, first time fighting Puff by any means, of course, but they definitely look like they're not making a lot of the super simple mistakes. You talked about messing up your grab and such a little bit, but definitely seems to be looking for these opportunities where grab is potentially there, which I think is good as she against Puff. You can't try and force it and go for your normal grabs, but when you force rolls, force shield, being able to capitalize on those opportunities for grab that you do get can be really strong. Mm -hmm. So I like the willingness to do that without just kind of unthoughtfully throwing them out. Right. Okay. Oh man, we went for that down smash. I feel like um, a lot of, excuse me, Dawson's grabs haven't been leading to like as much as I feel like maybe they should be. Like he's been going for a lot of these back throws, just kind of off stage, and his guard, I don't know, the fall is not usually as there as I uh, would have liked to see. Dawson with the lead on this stage will make a big difference as well. When Puff starts gaining a lead on, on a stage like this as well, where it's hard to close out stocks against her, it can kind of force a tempo out of yourself or your opponent if you are the Puff that is very advantageous for Puff's kind of like Wally style and the way that it's been picking apart a lot of this. Yeah, it can really make you impatient. Yeah, and there, there is a genuine pressure for it too, because you, while you understand you're probably not going to be going to time, you do have to like do something so it's to do it now or later, and most people just have to do it now yeah. type thing, which usually isn't the best, honestly, trying to like wait out, have your opponent see if they'll get impatient too. Most people don't ever even give the chance to see. If they see their opponent playing patient even for a moment, they'll just kind of like fall down to the idea that, well, if they're doing it now, they're just going to keep doing it. Whereas, yeah, a lot of times you make your opponent impatient as well, even if you do, don't have the lead. You have a lot of time left in these games. Six yeah, minutes, a lot, a lot of time for melee. <laughs> yeah. That's like actually very good DI on the up tilt. I don't know if he could have rested at that percent, but you always have to be uh, wary of it. Yeah, up tilt usually can be beat if, uh, especially for mid or higher percent, if you get proper DI on it. But it's like, it's really hard to react to. like. Basically can't, so you have to kind of be ready for it, almost like up throw to rest is against spaces. Mm. Okay. Yeah, Dawson coming out to honestly a very big lead. And like you said, that first game is like stocks come at such a premium. Oh, I thought he was looking for jab reset rest there. Uh, I think he it. was. But I accidentally pounded when they tried to do the jump rest. Just went straight over him. <laughs> I feel like Dustin's seen like a lot of little flubs that could, I mean, really could cost him. The um, he needs to clean it up a bit, you know. But yeah, you can open the say, door. Yeah, you can open the door, especially in later games if they keep up that slight level of sloppiness. Could open up a lot more opportunities for Doctor Lobster moving forward in the set. There's a certain bit of leniency Puff has with Dreamland. If, excuse me, in the stage, kind of helping them out and their survivability, but I mean, you make, you, you give up 30% for free on a different stage, that's half your stock, like here you yeah. give up 30% for free, you're putting yourself at risk, or mm -hmm. dying potentially, at what percent I was starting at, so I think you need to clean it up a little bit too, I agree especially from what we saw from that game, one of Dr. Lobster they get back to that a little bit more, Dawson found an early lead in that oh, last game. no, see what I'm talking about, he's missing a ton of these rests and, you know, while they may not cost you in, like, the the short term... Oh, my God. Wow. I... Oh, my God. That is some disrespect, I feel like. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's, like, if you catch Puff shielding there, their shield will run out at some point, and then you can react to them rolling or something, let go, and then still try and punish. So it's almost a game of chicken, and uh, Dawson definitely lost. Yeah. And Sheik's out smash only goes through on that like small part of the side platform, the inward side on each platform mm. where the stage evens out. You see how it's the slope? Right, right, right. It'll only go through on that part of the platform as well. Good recognition from Dr. Lobster to take the opportunity and give So it can be safer to shield on the platform too, depending on what part you're at for Puff than it necessarily is right there. And oh, right there, that wow. back throw, just a single no. back throw in this I'm matchup. Really 
Yeah, that was really great to even it. I mean, you're talking about like uh, needing to get more off throws than that does it. Yeah, that was it. Big in. Dr. Lobster had a little bit to play with. They had netted a slight lead before that, so still a pretty even game. Lobster's just kind of like out walling like Dawson here. Like a lot of these bears, bears are connecting where I feel like Puff usually um, gets it. I think that's yeah. probably Yoshi's too. Yeah, honestly, in this matchup, I feel like in the air and aerial against aerial, Sheik's a lot of the times either beat out or are just as good or better than Puffs when fighting against the other one. It's more about the risk reward uh, of a lot of these situations and how much Puff can gain off these openings that they do get versus how much Sheik gains. But when you look at a move like Sheik back air or something, it's extremely big still, really good hurt box, and it comes in from that angle. So if like you're coming in from below a puff and rising as they're back airing, your back air just goes in and beats it out from below. But like as theirs is going horizontal, you just straight up hit them first. I think forward air is kind of similar too. The puff is forward airing, you're forward airing. You kind of come in with that slap hit box from over the top, and most of Sheik's aerials just kind of beat puffs. Like Sheik's nair definitely out prioritizes a lot of puff stuff, like forward air and her nair. Um, so when it comes yeah, to aerial versus aerial, Sheik usually has it. It's just Puff gets such big advantage right. for so little risk when they do get the hit. Because of the aerial drift as well, you can, uh, I mean, it is a lot more safe because you're coming in, but yeah. They're no, strong. Uh, Dr. Lobster. Up. That is 2-1 uh, now, going to yeah. game four. Could be the last potential game if you are Dawson right now for your winner side run. Rack again. Where is the mm -hmm. second go? Do do do. Let's see who's in our top sixteen so far. Who's made it in yet? So we got Aclopora, Zephyrcrudo, Luna Gus, Slowcane, Panda, Pudgy Panda, and Feeding <laughs> Panda. Yep. Yeah, this is the other stage you talk about that Puff's really like. Yeah. Um, could you talk more about like why you like it? Or why well, they uh, like it? Excuse me. It's just, it simplifies a any edge guarding opportunity that like she can get. Honestly, if you get like a back throw, especially on this stage at like 30%, and, and like she holds out on the back throw or something, if they have like 4DI on it, a lot of times they're just dead. Straight up. That was oh. rough, but like, there's another example. It's just, it's so, so, so easy to. Edge guard against Sheik here. And the fact that we're talking about like Sheik being good with aerials against Puff in the air and that being a strong place, and also it can be it's a little bit harder to get rested if you're playing like Hot Potato. Hmm. Um, this stage, you have to be a lot more careful with your jumps because you don't have platforms to jump to and in between or to help aid in getting your aerials out easier. So it's a lot more honest in terms of like, I jump, I have these aerial options, I have another jump, or I can like get away. And if you choose the wrong option out of those, it's a lot harder to get down and Puff can sneak into that. Like, I talk a lot about the angles Sheik has. Against Puff, you want to try and stay at those angles. Like, your back air, kind of 45 degree angle, forward air, your needle, 45 degree. Oh my god, these needles. Wow. Yeah, If but if Puff, like, gets in underneath that little triangle angle, can really screw Sheik up on landing. And Dr. Lobster is almost getting a lot of the snipes there, but... As you start hitting the more needles, they kind of just kept doing the needle over and over. You have to slightly time it differently. You have to wait a second because Puff is going to be in hit stun, get knocked a little bit further away, and then have to jump again. So if you keep throwing it right away, eventually you're going to miss one. Um, so if you wait a little bit or charge the needles as you're rising and then let go, you'll have multiple needles and they'll hit lower as well. So that's that's usually how you can end up. If, you, if you're a sheet player and you find yourself in those situations where you're like, oh, I have an opportunity to needle gimp here, and they just never end up following through. Time your needles a little bit slower after one another and charge them as you rise. And that'll mm. make a big difference. Okay. Yeah, and um, I feel like that's uh, super interesting, like how needle play uh, comes into effect in this matchup because, like, Puff is in the air so much. I feel like it's kind of harder to hit, like you say, if you, you know, versus a fox where they're like, or other characters when they're more likely to be on the ground. It's like interesting that it seems like needles aren't used as much, but yeah. I think a really strong way to use needles against Puff are to kind of run away, charge them. If you really think you're going to hit them, you can let 
a little bit more stacks go to get more damage, but saving those charge stacks and needles for a situation like this, do you see how Puff was free to just jump up and up back towards stage? Made it a lot easier to recover. If Dr. Lobster had had a stack of needles there, and even from further in stage just double jumped and threw the needles at that 45 degree, it would block off all those upward angles that Dawson has to jump and get back to stage. So it's not even about hitting the Puff, it's about restricting which ways they can recover to the stage. You force them lower, more towards the ledge, and it's a lot easier to shark them from there. But if you just let them freely jump all the way back to stage and extremely above you, it's really hard to try and catch their drift or jump or anything. So using needles to like restrict Puff's pathways back to stage is a really strong way, I feel like. So like right here, you would double jump just like needle the other way, but otherwise Dawson is free to just do this. He like literally can just stay high that whole time. But if Dr. Lobster had jumped to throw those needles slightly before, he would have forced um, them all the way down and probably could have gotten with like down tilt jab or something with the ledge. And kind of like uh, like Puff, uh, how they will use turnips against, uh, excuse me, how Peach will use turnips against Puff by sort of like blocking off like the ways that could, they can drift back in. It's more of a like controlling space tool than anything, which is really yeah. interesting to think about. Yeah, and something that Hada pointed out when we were watching uh, J-Flex and maybe Dawson, but it was J-Flex and another she playing, it's the, the needles also can act similar to like Falco lasers in the sense that if Puff is trying to set up a lot of back airs, when you get hit in the air by a projectile, it forces you to turn around. So you can mm -hmm. use them to kind of force Puff to turn around and not be as comfortable setting up what they're trying to set up and force more weird scramble scenarios or like different spacings than Puff would want where your aerials keep winning like we were talking about earlier. So it's like a fine line of kind of trying to force Puff to where you want her to be and then using your aerials that can kind of beat them out when they get there. That makes sense. I feel like, oh no, that could have been, I want to say, <gasps> okay. Yeah, I feel like dude, he gets something off this back throw. This edge guard is super important. Oh no. Yeah, I'm not Super's quite having any stability. Or hate, or oh, hate angle. Wow. That that is not an easy uh, upbeat to hit as she. Yeah, and this could potentially. Okay. Man, either one of these guys needs to hit each other once to bring this to the last star. Yeah. Yo. Okay. I mean, everyone knows what Dawson's looking for here. I mean. Both these what, guys. What is it? Say it, say it, Slot. What is he looking for? Down B, down B. Looking for the, the down B. Okay. Yep, low profile, up till. I feel like uh, Lobster's been getting really good at not giving them, playing super well. Like, you see, like, a lot in shield, which is really great, because, like, what's Buff gonna do? Grab you? Okay, whatever. It doesn't give you anything. Especially on that B, it's not like these platform pressures. Yeah, not at center like that. You have to be careful about letting him get you off stage. But off with stage, the yeah. stage positioning that Dr. Lobster is showing right here, it's definitely, uh, I would rather get grabbed and certain other things. But the issue is about shielding, too, is if they start, like, tomahawking, either behind you, crossing you up, and, like, up-tilting your oh. shield and up-tilting. Really <laughs> I thought for a second. I was like... That's it. 